Femi Bajabiamila vows not to sign the 2021 budget for a worthy cause. And pandemonium breaks out in the country as thoughts take to the streets. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeinde. Welcome to Plots Politics. In response to the continued NSAS protests, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, has threatened to withhold his assent to the 2021 appropriation bill presently before the National Assembly if provisions are not made for the compensation of the families of victims of police brutality in the last decade. He added that it would also not sign the budget if the agreement between the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the federal government is not captured by the budget. Joining us to discuss this is uh, our public affairs analyst, Professor Chris Umwokobia. Good evening, Prof. Good evening. It's my pleasure to be on with you. And uh, later on, we'll be joined by security expert, Kabil Adamu. Let me start the conversation with you, Prof. Let's look at um, quite a lot of things that have happened, and uh, we intend to keep you here to end of this program. But let's look at the one that, that has to do with the Speaker of the House of Representatives. He has come out to say that government mean business, and he has even sent kind of a message to the executive arm that... If this is not captured in the budget, he's not going to sign as a leader of the lower chamber. What do you make out of this? I listened to the Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, and I think I align strongly with his comments. Uh, it was beautiful. He spoke nicely. He raised fundamental issues. And I... I think that he was uh, very, very conciliatory. He sounded like someone who sincerely wants the protests over and who wants the youths to believe in the commitment of government to doing the needful. And then he stuck his neck uh, out by saying that he will not sign the application bill with the issues that the Youths have been agitating about for upward of about 12 days now are not uh, captured in the budget. Wonderful speech. We are used to wonderful speeches in this country. We are used to platitudes. We are used to nice talk. But I think that uh, some of these issues should uh, be captured in action. If uh, that lovely speech were to come out today, the same day that state agents procured thugs to infiltrate protests and cause violence, my heart bleeds. Hmm. Okay, Professor Chris, I I'll come back to you. I, I think uh, we are not having, I just hope we are not having a network issue. Well, we have been joined by Kabir Adamu, a security expert who joins us from Abuja. Good evening, Kabir. Yeah, I, I hope there's no loss of audio there. But let me quickly uh, throw the first question to you. And that has to do with uh, what the police has done as we speak. Uh, police has been deployed across the country, the anti-riot uh, police officers. Now, my question is, um, was police not prepared for this? Didn't, didn't they have intelligence that this, this protest is likely to go violent as we have it? Because we have police even becoming victims. Yes, um, Bishop, I hope you can hear me now. I can hear you. I can hear you very well. Excellent. Um, so uh, that's one of the, I, I would say, but most worrisome development with the circumstances that we're currently having. The, it appears that um, the government is playing catch up. Um, and so the question to ask is why is the government playing catch up when? Within the police, we have an intelligence unit. Then we have, of course, the Office of the National Security Advisor. And then we have 
the SSS, the DIA, and the NIE. And I know that every year, monies are released for these organizations. So to uh, you know, align this, your question with the statement, the speech by the speaker, Honorable Speaker, House of Rep, I would like to uh, mention that perhaps it is in his interest to make sure that he, he, he do the committees that have oversight for this department, that they go out and ask these questions regarding uh, why the intelligence organizations have not been able to use their capability to generate um, the, this the type of intelligence, including, for instance, why the police seems to be have been have been you know caught uh, off guard with this development. Um, the deployment of mobile police and other units of the police to go and secure strategic units within the country. I'm a bit worried, the for the simple reason that. We are deploying the police that honestly don't have equipment. The equipment at, at their disposal is what they are going to use. Now, if they are confronted with a rioter situation, what they have at, in their, their, their disposal are AK-47, and very few of them have riot control equipment. When last did I, I can't remember when last I saw a police with a shield, um, like it used to be in those days. Um, so that that's my worry, and I would urge us as you know, all the media men and civil society organizations to put an eye on that and ask relevant questions with, with, uh, regarding the police leadership. Uh, how, they are, they, yes, they are deploying, but what kind of equipment are these uh, people that they are deploying going with? Uh, is, is it combat weapons, uh, AK-47? So are they going to confront a crowd uh, with AK-47? Very, very disturbing situation. But yes, um, intelligence uh, seems to have filled up and the House okay. of Reps and the uh, parliament as a whole needs to look into that issue. Why did intelligence fail us? Okay, um, very important question you've just raised, and uh, we'll keep tab with information as it unfolds. This is going to be more like a news program because uh, we'll be keeping you updated because um, a report just filtered in that uh, the, the protesters are being uh, uh, resisted in Lekki now by soldiers, and uh, we, we, will, we will stay on top of this story to double check and uh, talk more on it. Uh, do we have Professor back on there? Professor Chris, are you back now? Can we hear him? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, before we, you make your further comment, we want to put our uh, viewers in context so that they will know what exactly the Speaker of the House of Representatives did say so that it doesn't look as if we are just the three of us that have listened to him. Let's take a listen, then we'll come back to you in a few seconds. Sign off on a budget that does not meet the reasonable demands of the ASU, to which government has already acceded. There is no better time to rethink the system of funding for higher education in Nigeria. The current system does a great disservice to our children and our country, and we must commit to changing it so that we can free our institutions of higher learning to be citadels where innovation thrives and excellence is a given. With my colleagues in the House of Representatives, I will visit over the next week some of the families of those who have lost loved ones to police brutality. And when we come back, we will work together to honor the memory of those who we have lost. The House of Representatives will pass an electoral reform bill Okay, um, I'm sorry, that was the second part of that comment by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, because that was a follow-up to say that um, not just the... We will make sure we pay you that track before the program ends. But staying on the issue, uh, Mr. Chris, are we, are we having a situation here that has gone beyond control? Looking at what is happening, police are being attacked, protesters are now being attacked, we are recording deaths, we are recording injuries. Should this protest go this way when we've had appeal, when we've had penitence, when we've had a kind of camaraderie between the government and the governed? Uh, let me say that we have been through this path before. Remember that whilst Abacha was the head of state, several uh, military officers and uh, platoon were attacked by supposed Nadeco leaders, but those were not the truth. Uh, 
it was much, much, much uh, later that at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that Mustafa and several other persons, our Mustafa and so, several other persons told us exactly what happened. That they were the ones who actually masterminded the attack of their own people so that uh, they would make Nadeko and the civil society look villainous, look impious, and look in peace. But as I talk to you, it is glaring that we live in a different world where technology is, is premium and premium time. I say this advisedly. We have seen pictures and videos of agent provocations visibly sponsored by state agents. I do not want to say Mr. President and the presidency, but visibly sponsored by state agents to provoke peaceful protesters in Nigeria to conflict and violence. What we see today started Thursday, Friday last week, when uh, hoodlums and thugs invaded peaceful protests and attempted to force peaceful demonstrators to violence. They were able to manage it. And up until yesterday, today, you could visibly see a state that has decided to contrive violence and anarchy so that it will have sufficient reasons to bring out the police, to bring out the armed forces, to bring out the DSS against its own citizens. Kind of day, as I talk to you, I have tears in my eyes because the protest he tattoo organized by Nigerian youths that has been applauded across the world. Nigerians in diaspora have shown solidarity. People across the world have applauded what the Nigerian youth and the Nigerian citizens have done. To conduct a protest peacefully for about 12 days is salutary. A government that should genuinely appreciate it and applaud its youth has directly or indirectly procured violence. And you have videos. It's, the social media are what with videos where state agents are the ones ferrying thugs to disrupt protests. The social media is a watch with videos okay. about Prof. Prof. Uh, ferrying thugs and bandits to cut violence. Prof. And as I talk to you, it is clear before the world and before everyone who truly cares about this country that the government and state agents are the agent for the tutors. But I pray for Nigeria. Okay, Prof. And I pray for those who truly care Prof. about our country to begin to effectively speak up and speak loud. Okay, Prof. Not Prof. Prof, I will allow you to speak up and speak loud on this issue. And I'm happy, and I'm happy to inform our viewers that uh, you are a lawyer and definitely you, you definitely watch what you say about some of the facts you have in your in your in your in your possession concerning the state being accused of sponsoring these talks Pro, i promise you that i will come back to seek more clarity on that but let me talk to kabir now he has raised something very critical which a guest also pointed out yesterday what we have is it a clear signal that these talks are being sponsored by agents of the state um, I am a social researcher, and I base my conclusions on facts. Um, I'm surprised that as a lawyer, he's making such categorical statements, and so uh, he probably has more information than, than I do. What I have seen so far have, have been social media posts, and as someone who has expertise in cybersecurity and IT, I know that it's very, very um, dicey for you to depend on what you see on social media. Yes, it, will, it may give you an indication, but you need to go further to corroborate your statement. Uh, part of what I've seen, uh, you know, people being dropped off in vehicles and sometimes, you know, even people wearing um, jackets who seem to be either paying them or guiding them what to do. And for me as a social researcher, that is not enough to say, it is they are being sponsored by, by government and or even go to the extent of saying the presidency. I think that is a bit far-fetching and I would call for a bit of restraint and perhaps uh, we're all not happy with the situation, but then 
uh, I don't think it's wise to make such fallacious um, state statements um, until and unless there is a direct uh, evidence linking government, as it were, with those doubts, then I would not reach that conclusion that they are government-sponsored. Um, as someone who understands intelligence, and believe me, I, I, I do, I have about 23 years' experience in intelligence, both public and commercial, I can tell you that governments can do what you know he's alleging that government is doing. But for you to categorically come out and say that it is government, uh, he used the word agent provocateur. That's a very complex um, area. Uh, and as a lawyer, I doubt if he really understands what that, co that whole, um, uh, what it means to be an agent provocateur. Okay. The whole right. essence of being an agent provocateur is that you cannot even tie the provocateur to the sponsor. I'm going to so allow you to respond. Now categorically I'm going to allow you to respond. Prof, um, prof uh, yes. I'm going to allow you to respond. And I beg you to, I know how passionate you are on this issue. But as a person, beyond what you want to respond to. As a person, I'm just trying to seek clarity on the possibility of these accusations. Can you have a lawyer? I yes. totally understand what you're doing. You, you, you have to moderate this program, but let me say clearly that it is unfair to our country and indeed to the citizens of this country to attempt to play the ostrich, to attempt to hide behind one finger. Kayade pictures says a thousand words. Coyote, a protest has been, until today, very peaceful across the country. Until yesterday, very peaceful in those states have suddenly got, become violent across the country. The witch cried last night, Coyote, and the child died this morning. And you can make your conjectures. I am not afraid of anything. I can face litigation. I am saying that the time has come for us to be true to our country. The time has come for us to do things correctly and rightly. Those who are doing what they are doing across this country today know to what extent, to what end they are doing what they are doing. But I say that God who runs the human pilgrimage is their life, is, their, is watching politicians, is watching this country, and that same God will take this country to promise. I have said repeatedly that my concern is for the good of the Nigerian health program. My concern is for the good of the Nigerian people. And for that, I am ready to go to any extent to protect the integrity of the Nigerian state. I align with those who call themselves security experts. But it is visible that even the deaf, dumb, and blind know that the provocation to violence has been procured. The young boys who have been arrested by the peaceful protesters and handed over to the police have said that much. Okay. Up until now, I think that what those who truly, truly care about this country and who care about national security should begin to do is to tell the government and agents of government that what is happening now is unfair and not right. Prof, 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 sorry, prof, prof, let me, let me stay with you. Let me stay with you. Let me stay with you before I go back to Mr. Kabir. I, I know it will give us more insight on this. But staying with you, um, I, I, what I want clarity on is, are we saying government is sponsoring talks to attack police officers, to burn down police station, to even attack another agency of the government? I, I'm just saying that. I'll, I know you've been through many battles, many struggles in the past. Could that be the reason why you make this claim based on your experience beyond the pictures you have? I will answer this question with a poser, Kayode. The first is, if you saw the video of the prison break in a do state, the invasion of the correctional facility, the question you ask yourself, why were state agents, why were the policemen far away Hands are Kimbo and mouths are gay. Why did they not do anything at that point? Point number two, if you notice the pictures of the invasion of police stations and why did the state police, why did the police not take proper action at dispersing the thugs? All these, apparently, are contrived events. 
the earth event worked up so that the IG and his team can deploy mobile policemen across the country to stop okay. what has otherwise been a peaceful protest. Let, let me, let me allow Mr. Kabiru. We are used to this. We have seen this before in this country. But I am saying that under a democracy, we should handle things better. If the government has confronted, contacted some of us to understand what obtains with, with, with proactive protest and all that, maybe they would have been properly advised. Okay. Those Let, who decided to let's vote. work with these two posers. Let's work with these two posers for now because I know you have so much. I'm like I promise you, we'll keep you to the end of the program. Uh, Kabir, please, um, let's look at like you mentioned that there is a possibility that government can do this kind of thing, but currently you don't have such available information. But beyond that, how do we even curb the escalation that we have seen? For the benefit of doubt, let's assume government is not responsible. How should the government handle these issues? Because when we heard about Operation Crocodile Smile, there was a lot of um, suspicion. But could that be part of the strategy of the government to quell the tension? OK, um, first off, I do not align myself with the statement that government is not responsible. Um, there may be some weaknesses uh, visible, and one of them is what we, why we are having this discussion: the failed, um, you know, policing system that we have in the country, which unfortunately has a history, and um, of course it should have been corrected by now. There were several commissions that were set up before now, and if the reports and recommendations of those commissions or committees or co you know uh, panels of investigation have been implemented, we will not be where we are today. Um, so I align to that fact that we have a failed policing system. Uh, I would also tell you, and I challenge my co-discussant, to look into this. Um, I say this with all sense of responsibility. The current administration has done more in terms of an attempt to improve policing reform than any other previous administration. There are just three areas I will quickly mention. The Police Act 2020. Look at the civil, he's a lawyer, the civil liberty content in that police act. The second one is the review of Fourth Order 237 that was done by the current IG, very novel. And of course, the last one is the um, passing of the uh, Police Trust Fund Act, which is meant to provide a transparent pool for resourcing of the police. In the past, I will pay money to the police, and frankly, it's not accountable. We were here when a senator said the then IG was monthly going home with about 10 billion naira. Where were, where were we? Why did we keep quiet about that? So anyway, having said that, what are the credible ways to manage the situation? Um, crisis management demands three things. One of them is you empathize. So um, I would expect the whole of government, uh, the legislative arm of government, the executive arm, and the judicial arm to empathize with all the youths. There are between 40 to 70 million youths that are either underemployed, um, um, disenchanted or in one form of trauma or the other. How do you empathize with them? As an example, the salaries that everybody is complaining about um, show effort by either reducing that salary or donating it to a certain cause well, or even dispelling the notion that the salary is what, what, what people believe it is. I mean, till date, there is a certain figure that is associated with the parliament. That needs to be either corrected or an effort made to redu reduce it. So go going back to the speech by the, the speaker, House of Rep, empathy is very important in such situations. The second thing is build confidence. Now, how do you build confidence? The demand for police reform is clear. I've mentioned three platforms that the Buhari administration has provided. Perhaps our effort going forward is to produce a framework for implementation of police reform that would provide credible timelines, short-term, mid-term, and long-term in a credible manner that would allow you, the media, and civil society organizations to measure implementation so that we can hold the government to account. That is the kind of accountability I expect to see. And frankly, the, the speaker can play a role in that because he's got committees that cover, that look after um, issues within the police. And then the last one, which is the most difficult one, is to give hope. Now, how do you give hope to between 40 and 70 million people that are either underemployed, unemployed, or 
uh, disenchanted. That is a difficult one for us as a country. But the economists can help us in that regard. I know that improving infrastructure is one of the ways to do that. I know that providing capital is another way to do that. And then more importantly, and that's my area, improving security. If we can do these three things, then we're giving hope to the youth. Believe me, if we're able to do that in about two weeks, then I'm, I'm almost certain that this simmering tension that we have in the country will reduce. We need to, we need to, we need to give hope to our youth. Thank you very much, Kabiru Adamu. I allowed you to give us clear court solutions and we sincerely hope and I have a strong belief that people in power are listening and they will take these uh, pieces of advice that you've given and uh, we'll get to the end of this matter. I'm afraid uh, uh, this session is over. We will have to sign you off for your time, but let's hope that this word will stand, um, will stand as a test of, will stand the test of time, and we will have some of these recommendations that you've made. Thank you once again, Kabiru Adamu. Thank you, um, Kabiru, for having me. And uh, Professor Chris Mokovia will still stay with you, but we'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be looking at another dimension to this protest. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be back very shortly.